First, you need to start by building your own game engine, so that you can extract the maximum amount of... I'm just kidding. Pick one of the engines out there. I use Unreal Engine, but there are other great engines out there like, um, for example, well, just Google. You're going to have to do a lot of Googling anyway, so get used to it. Don't expect anyone to hold your hand. The three main engines out there are Unreal, Unity, and Godot. Pick the one that looks the prettiest. If it doesn't feel right, try another one until you find the one you like. We live in a time where you can be picky about the engine you want to use. You don't even have to download them. Look for an absolute beginner's tutorial that goes over the interface and how to make a very basic game. Some people don't understand why I use Unreal Engine for retro projects, and the reason is simple. Blueprints. You can make an entire game using only blueprints. And no, it doesn't have to be a walking simulator. You can make a complex game in Unreal Engine without writing a single line of code. And if there is something that can only be done in code, it's very likely that there already is a plugin for it on the marketplace. The most important advice in this video is this. Do not start by attempting to make an open world game or an RPG game. Your first game should be barely a game. It just needs to function as one. It doesn't have to look good or sound good. Make a tiny game from start to finish. I know it might sound lame because you probably want to make something close to your favorite game and it's probably a big budget AAA game. You can make a game by taking advantage of the physics engine. You can push objects around from point A to point B, make a couple of levels and make sure you can actually finish the game. Make a user interface. Why should you bother with it? Because many people start a project and then abandon it before they get to UI. Because you can get quite far before you ever need it. And you might not even like the engine you've picked. You might want to try another one. So by making a simple game, you can quickly build it in several engines. My first game was a jumping game. The player started at the bottom of an elevator shaft and had to get out by climbing up. I placed all sorts of obstacles in the way to make it more fun. I enjoyed it mostly because I was emotionally invested. It was my baby. It looked like ass and there were barely any sound effects, but I learned a lot. Don't expect it to be good and make money. Don't expect to make money from games in general is what I hear. But people keep making them, so they must be earning something, right? Wrong. Game Dev is the ultimate game. It's very deep and addictive. It's the best game out there, but the price is your time and sanity. Don't be discouraged by negative feedback or a lack of feedback. Odds are no one is going to care enough to play your first game. Don't compare the malware you made in a couple of weeks to a game that took a team of professionals several years to make. Don't rely on tutorials. They should be used to get a feel for how things work and what you're supposed to do. Don't use tutorials as a way of adding features to your game. Because that's how you get trapped in the tutorial hell, where you build something and don't understand how to fix it when something goes wrong. Then you look for a new tutorial and so on. Expect things to take longer than you initially thought, because a lot will go wrong. You will realize that you don't have the necessary skills to do something, for example, to make a character, so you have to spend a lot of time learning it. If my advice seems vague, it's because there is no correct way of learning game development. What works for some might not work for others, because it depends on so many variables, like your age, how much free time you have, what type of game you eventually want to make. So just get started. Don't make it into a new year's resolution because people usually quit after a month or sooner. This video was inspired by Nakey Jakey. In his latest video he expressed a desire to learn how to make games. My initial reaction was, God it must be weird going from a video game critic to a video game developer. I'm very curious to know how his opinions might change once he dips his toes in game development. I guess he might regret being so harsh towards some games. I can't imagine it being the other way around though.